one of the stereotypes of adults who play video games is that you are a virgin, so you never kissed a girl in your entire life. And what's weird is that there is a sex comedy from the early 1980s that is a video game themed movie. Back in the 80s, sex comedies were really popular, like Revenge of the Nerds and Porky's. The kind of movie where someone will show their boobs to get that PG rating, and actors in their 30s playing high schoolers, who were more qualified in playing teachers. Yep, those types of movies. Joysticks is a movie that I just heard of online, so I don't have any personal experiences with this movie. I just found it interesting that this movie exists. And the title is clever. Get it? Joysticks? Joysticks are like our dicks? Researching this movie, no critic on Rotten Tomatoes reviewed this movie. There is an audience score and it is 29%. No wonder this movie is free to watch. I just searched for the movie on YouTube and here it is. Joysticks is directed by Graydon Clark, who is known for directing low budget movies in the 70s and 80s. So, is this movie good? I don't know, I guess I just I'll watch the fucking movie, of course. Yes. It is so amazing that the beginning credits start just right away. I'm so used to watching movies on a streaming service or on Blu-ray and seeing an FBI logo and a studio logo. Nope, not with this movie. The moment I clicked on joysticks, the movie went straight to the opening credits. With music I can't put in the video because of copyright. After the beginning credits, the movie starts with this nerd humming some tune, and there's some babes hitting on him. He looks a lot like Milhouse for somebody who has two A's chicks hitting on him. Yahoo! We'll make beautiful music together. Oh shit, titties! I can't really show that on YouTube, so I am going to try my very best to censor all of the nudity. I can promise you that. It's just a weird combination to make a video game themed movie and make it a sex comedy in the 80s. Considering back in the 80s, video games were considered kid stuff. Eugene then climbed out of his car to bang two chicks in broad daylight in the middle of the fucking road. Dude, you idiot. You're in a public place. Get out of the way of the middle of the fucking road. <laughs> I love this movie. Ladies, prepare yourself. I would like you to meet Simba. Oh shit. Eugene's dick is named Simba. Is that what Simba was named after in The Lion King? Somebody's dick? Smile! Hey! What? What are you- What? You're not wearing anything completely revealing or embarrassing, Eugene. And then a police car came. You're in a public place. Don't fuck in public or you're gonna get arrested. It turned out to be a prank because those two chicks stole Eugene's pants. Wait. If it's a prank, then why did you show Eugene your boobs, and why did you let his face touch your cleavage? I'm so fucking confused. The underwear isn't that revealing, so I don't get why he is making a big deal out of it. Oh god, the lighting is terrible for an arcade place. Aren't the arcade machines supposed to be glowing? Why does this scene here feel so gray? Add some fucking color and lighting. I think the color correcting is better on the Blu-ray, but I would rather just watch this movie for free. I can't tell if the movie always had been dark and poorly lit when released. I don't know. I know there is a bootleg DVD, and I did find a Betamax copy of the movie. Eugene later got his pants back, and it turned out... It was a prank that the manager, Jefferson, 
pulled off. I belong to Eugene Groby. I don't know if there is a way of telling what's happening in this scene without getting cancelled. Excuse me, young man. Would, you've got to stop playing the games. You're a disgrace. You called a fat dude older than you, young man. You're the only sex comedy character played by an actor who was qualified to play high schoolers at the time this movie came out. This Jack Black dude threatens Eugene with a knife. After that, he tries to hijack the arcade machine, and then the manager introduces the fat guy, Jonathan, to Eugene. Uh, excuse me? Oh, it must have been a ghost that did that. Or Sausage Party might be in the same universe as this movie. I wanna see the manager! Male Karen. Wait. Haven't I seen this dude in other movies before? Is that Joe Don Baker, the CIA agent from GoldenEye? That's the same dude. Interesting connection there. MANEUVER! <laughs> yeah, because farts are so funny. Okay, fart jokes can be funny if it's used in the right media. If it's something like in Star Wars, then it doesn't work. But if it is a raunchy comedy, then fart and toilet humor can be funny if executed well. Think of it like pineapple and pizza. Joe Don Baker's character, Joseph Rudder, is the villain of this movie, and he is just this typical overprotective father in this movie who wants to shut the arcade down. Joseph Rudder's motivation in this movie is completely understandable because the arcade owner's grandson turned an arcade into a fraught house. Oh crap, I need to censor that just in case there are kids with iPads watching this. Eugene and Jonathan decided to prank Jefferson while he partied with some ladies by spraying a fire extinguisher in the vent while they were having, you know, Wait a minute, wasn't Jonathan treating Eugene like shit, like, minutes earlier? I am so confused about the character motivation here. And didn't Jonathan threaten Eugene with the knife earlier? And now they're friends now? Jonathan just agreed to help Eugene get revenge after Jonathan threatened him and joined in laughing at Eugene in his underwear. If somebody was laughing at my misfortune with someone who caused my misfortune, then I wouldn't be friends with that person. One way or the other, I'm gonna close that place down. Joseph Rudder is conveniently there for the plot because somehow he has a tracking device in his daughter somehow, which is how he knows where his daughter is at. The rest of the movie is just really fucking weird as hell with a bunch of weird shit happening. Like this dog here jamming to the music at the arcade. Eugene finds a plot to steal the arcade machines and manager Jefferson thinks it is a stupid idea to call the cops because his grandpa won't be happy about it. Jonathan and Eugene broke into Joe Rudder's house. Jonathan managed to sneak downstairs and be out at the front porch and Eugene got stuck on Mr. Rudder's bed because... Uh... I don't know how to describe this scene. Assert your manhood! <laughs> Those two robbers drove the truck over Joe Rudder's driveway, telling him, mission accomplished. They then opened the truck and the truck was empty. How was the truck empty? And I can't see if there is anything inside or not, because this movie is poorly lit. How in the rock hard fuck? Did Jefferson unload the truck so fast? And the robbers, how did they not notice? Joseph Rudder would never give up because he created a protest of Karens and male Karens and the news reported on this. Then a court battle, which is probably the weirdest court and mayor meeting scene in a movie I had ever seen. We are here to extinguish the filth and the decadence that is commonly referred to as video game entertainment. 
Yeah, basic early 80s arcade games like Galaga and Pac-Man definitely cause high school age kids to party and misbehave. The Honorable Mr. Joseph Rudder is full of shit. Shouldn't you be more professional in a court meeting? You shouldn't swear in a court battle. After that Pac-Man transition that appears throughout the movie, there's a crazy middle-aged bitch talking about how germy arcade joysticks are. The hand that holds the, uh, joystick. <laughs> <laughs> ah, title of the movie! It gets more ridiculous. The mayor decided that the arcade isn't doing anything illegal and won't close the arcade down after seeing a picture of Joseph Rudder with two topless minors played by late 20 year olds, so it's fine. Then after that... Uh, congratulations young Mr. Bailey, you did quite well in here. Well, thank you, Rudder. That's uh, very sportsmanlike of you. Yeah, for having an embarrassing photo shown during a town meeting. That's as much sportsmanship as John Candy Kane. Mr. Rudder shows a stuffed animal rat, and then Jefferson gets all offended and pissed off. Eugene stepped in, and everyone agrees to do an arcade game competition. If you win, I'll close the arcade down. But if I win, you leave the arcade the hell alone. Jonathan agrees to be the one who plays Pac-Man in the competition, but later got kidnapped with no scene of Jonathan getting kidnapped at all. All off screen, only a line of dialogue. You sure you know where that slob kid lives? Eugene and Jefferson found out that Jonathan was missing and a twist. Jefferson doesn't play video games because it gives him post-traumatic stress with the girl he lost, Sandy. Sandy's father caught Jefferson and Sandy having sex. Then Sandy moved out of town. Since then, arcade screens give Jefferson visions of that incident. Okay, I know this was the 80s, so Instagram didn't exist. But couldn't Jefferson and Sandy stay in touch by using landline or by driving? I guess it depends on how far out of town Sandy moved. Is this next scene a spoof or something? Because this reminds me of Rocky. Yeah, when I try to get good at a video game, I will try to do push-ups and that will get me good at video games. Just look at it. This bit here reminds me of this bit of regular show right here where Mordecai tries to conquer Rigby's fear of a cheesy low-budget horror movie. You can see the microphone <gasps> showing. Look at it. Get off me! Jefferson is now prepared for the tournament and plays Pac-Man. Okay, that isn't Pac-Man at all. There isn't a single pellet on the screen here. Yes, in the Pac-Man arcade, there is fruit, but it's a lot less common in the actual game. Pac-Man is literally touching a red ghost, and he isn't dead. That's not how Pac-Man works. Could you try to use actual gameplay from the arcade for this? Could you try just a little bit harder here? Meanwhile, back to Jonathan, Joseph Rudder's wife decided to make out with Jonathan. That's fucking disgusting, his shirt is fucking dirty, he never showers, and he just farted, and Mrs. Rudder is attracted to it. Oh, my prayers have been answered. Back at the arcade, Jefferson wins the contest, and the grandpa who runs the arcade comes back. Then Sandy comes back as well, happy ending, blah blah blah, but what's crazy about this scene is that George, the arcade owner, hasn't matured past the age of 24. Well, I'm not the one to talk. I am 20 years old. Hell, that's obvious. Somebody gotta get this boy laid! Eugene comes to the motel where the hooker was at, and then credits. So, is this movie good? Nope. Not really. I guess you could watch it with your buddies to laugh about how absurd this movie is, I, I guess. It's just weird to make a video game themed sex comedy 
at a time when video games were considered stuff for kids. Considering that other video game movies at that time were kid and family oriented. The concept of a retro arcade owner allowing his relative to run the arcade and then that relative turning it into a fraught house is a concept that would work much better if this was 30 to 40 years after this movie came out. Considering there are a lot of people in their 40s and 50s nostalgic for retro classic arcade games, a movie like Joysticks would work a lot better if it came out in the 2010s or today. Only if Hollywood isn't so obsessed with being politically correct.